We're going to talk about a few particular kinds of discrete random variables that describe situations that have a probability distribution that follows a particular functional form. The first of these distributions is the binomial distribution. The binomial distribution describes situations where we have a series of n Bernoulli trials. A Bernoulli trial is an experiment that has only one of two possible outcomes, hence the binomial distribution. Examples of a Bernoulli trial could be a coin flip, whose outcome is either a head or a tail, a game, whose outcome is either win or lose, or maybe an exam, whose outcome is pass or fail. In general, we say the outcome of the Bernoulli trial is either a success or a failure, and a binomially distributed random variable provides the probability of some number of successes in those n trials. Note here that success just means the outcome that we're interested in finding the probability of. It may not really mean a success is a positive thing. For example, if we're wanting to find the probability that we fail two of the next five exams, success in the binomial distribution language would be failed exam, not what we would typically define as a success in everyday use. There are four properties of a binomial experiment, in addition to the typical properties of a probability. The first is that we are observing n identical Bernoulli trials. The second is that each trial has only two possible outcomes, naturally by definition of a Bernoulli trial. Third, the probabilities of the two outcomes remain constant. The probability of success is p, therefore the probability of failure, or the complement of success, is 1 minus p. Some textbooks use q as the notation for 1 minus p, but I prefer to be explicit. Finally, the trials are independent. That is, observing a success or several successes doesn't impact the probability of witnessing another success or a failure in an individual trial or vice versa. Let's motivate the binomial probability distribution function with the quality control operations at Duff Brewery. Say a bottle of Duff beer is determined to be either defective or not defective. Anything out of the ordinary with the bottle, if the label is a little off, if there's a scratch on the bottle, if the fill of the bottle is a little low, then we call the bottle defective. You might imagine that making a quality control assessment about a bottle of Duff beer involves a Bernoulli trial. There are two possible outcomes, either defective or not defective, and the bottle can fall into only one of those categories. Say we take a random sample of five bottles of beer, and we repeat our Bernoulli trial five times. Random variable x is defined as the number of defective bottles found in the sample of five. Let's say the historical probability of any particular bottle being defective is 0.02. That is, 2% of bottles on average are defective. We ask a question. What's the probability that we find two defective bottles in those five? That is, what's the probability that x equals two? Let's enumerate a few possible ways to get two defective beer bottles out of five. It could be that the first two of the five are defective. Individually, the probability that we get two defective bottles and then three non-defective bottles is 0.02 and 0.02 and 0.98 and 0.98 and 0.98. That is, we're finding the intersection of five independent events, so we multiply those probabilities together. In shorthand, we find that the probability of this particular outcome to be 0.02 to the two times 0.98 to the 3. Let's look at another possible way to get two out of the five defective bottles. The first and fourth bottles are defective. The probability that this happens is 0.02 times 0.98 times 0.98 times 0.02 times 0.98, which is 0.02 to the 2 times 0.98 to the 3. Another way to get two defective bottles and three non-defective bottles is for bottles three and five to be defective. The probability of this outcome, just like the others, is 0.02 to the 2 times 0.98 to the 3. We can enumerate all these possibilities, but we're better than that. We know some counting functions. How many ways are there to choose two defective bottles out of five? The answer, of course, is with the combination function from counting. Five choose two is 10. The probability of each of those 10 possible outcomes is 0.02 to the 2 times 0.98 to the 3. It could be the first possible outcome, or the second possible outcome, or the third possible outcome, and so on until 10. That is, we're taking the union of the probabilities of each possible outcome. That is, 
we're summing 0.02 to the 2 times 0.98 to the 3 over and over and over again 10 times. We could also write that as 10 times 0.02 to the 2 times 0.98 to the 3. And that is the probability we find two defective bottles in the 5, or the probability that x equals 2. The probability that any one of those particular outcomes occurs is 0 0.000376. And when we account for the 10 ways that any of those outcomes could occur, we get that the probability that x equals 2 is 0 0.00376. Let's write this more generally. For a binomially distributed random variable y, the probability that y takes on the value little y is n choose y times p to the y times 1 minus p to the n minus y. That is, how many ways are there to choose y successes out of our n trials, multiplied by the probability of a particular outcome, y successes at probability p each, then the remaining n minus y trials are failures at probability 1 minus p each. Let's look at another example. Mm -hmm. An electronics manufacturer claims that 20% of its power supply units need service during the warranty period. To investigate this claim, technicians test 12 units and subject each one to accelerated testing to simulate use during the warranty period. Let random variable y measure the number of power supply units that need service during the warranty period out of 12 units. Let's find the probability distribution for this random variable. Recall that the probability distribution lists the realizations of the random variable along with the probability of each realization. Let's find the probability that x equals 0, that is, the probability that we find no power supply units in 12 that need service during the warranty period. The probability that y equals 0 is 12 choose 0 times 0.2 to the 0 times 0.8 to the 12, which is 0 0.0687. That is, every time we have a set of 12 power supply units, on average, 6.87 of those sets of 12 will have no units that require servicing during the warranty period. The probability that y equals 1, or the probability that one of the 12 units requires service, is 0.2062. Doing this calculation for all other realizations of the random variable will give us the distribution for y. Recall again the two properties of probability. The probability of any realization of the random variable has to be between 0 and 1, inclusive of 0 and 1. And the sum of the probabilities of all possible realizations must be 1. Our probability distribution satisfies this requirement, aside from any round-off error with the sum of probabilities. Let's take a look at the expected value and variance of a random variable that follows a binomial distribution. For the expected value, let's first consider the expected value of an individual trial. If we're counting successes, then we assign a 1 to the outcome of a Bernoulli trial to the success result of that trial, and a 0 to the failure result. A success occurs with probability p, and a failure occurs with probability 1 minus p. Therefore, the expected value of a trial is the realization multiplied by its probability summed across all realizations, or 1 times p plus 0 times 1 minus p. The expected value of a trial is then p. On average, what's the result of a Bernoulli trial? p. We repeat that expectation for n different trials, and on average, we calculate the expected value of the random variable of a binomial distribution to be n times p. Back to random variable y the number of power supply units requiring service during the warranty period. P was 0.2 and N was 12. Therefore, the expected value of the random variable is 2.4 units. That is, when we view 12 power supply units, we expect on average 2.4 to require service during the warranty period. Note that 2.4 isn't necessarily a discrete value as it's an average number. For the calculation of variance, remember that variance is the expected value of the squared difference between the variable and its expected value. Let's look at one of the individual Bernoulli trials, the ith trial. The squared difference between the outcome of the ith trial and its expected value p is p times 1 minus p. When we repeat the trial n times, we find that the variance for our random variable y is n times p times 1 minus p. The standard deviation sigma is the square root of the variance. Back to the power supply example, the variance of random variable y is 12 times 0.2 times 0.8, or 1.92 power supply units squared. The standard deviation is 1.39 supply units. 
To recap, the binomial distribution is used to describe random variables that count the number of successes we witness in a number of trials that can have only one of two outcomes, successes or failures.